Uh, Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. At this moment, I would like to offer my remarks, focus my thoughts, and lend my voice of support also to the citizens and, more importantly, the children of Flint, Michigan. Here is why. As has already been alluded, in December, forgive me, in November, the citizens filed a class action lawsuit against their governor, city, state governments for the highly toxic levels of lead found in Flint's water supply that has been poisoning those residents for over two years. As chair of City Council's Committee on the Environment and Sustainability, I pay close attention to this issue and I join the Environmental Protection Agency, Clean Water Action, the American Civil Liberties Union, the Natural Resource Defense Council, and so many other social and environmental organizations across the country in demanding justice and swift action from the governor first and then to the government to address this Katrina-type disaster we witness every day in Flint, Michigan. Here's the background. Like many municipalities facing extreme budget constraints, the city of Flint changed its water source from Lake Huron to the Flint River as a temporary cost-cutting measure. Bad judgment. The acidity of the water from the Flint River corroded pipes, allowing dangerous levels of lead to leak into the water supply. Tap water turned to a strange color, and tests showed lead levels rose 10 times higher than years before. The short-term and long-term health ramifications of this gross negligence are staggering at best and criminal at worst. One local hospital, a woman by the way, found that the percentage of Flint children with elevated lead levels doubled, leading to health effects such as skin lesions, hair loss, vision loss, memory loss, depression, and anxiety. Even more tragic are the long-term effects of lead poisoning, which damages and affects fertility, our kidneys, the nervous system, the cardiovascular system and circulation, for sure a child's behavior, digestion, their bones, <laughs> muscle, are only a part of the list. Colleagues, you may recall, as has been shared, that in year 2010, I worked closely with Shelly Anoff, took great guidance from Councilwoman Maria Quinones Sanchez and Councilwoman Tasco, and we tackled the issue of lead in apartment dwellings here in our city. You may recall our biggest opponent at that time in this legislative journey was HAPCO. But for over a year, the leadership and membership of HAPCO and myself sat down and figured out painstakingly how we could tackle this important, ugly health issue. I was proud to work with Homeowners Association of Philadelphia on Bill Number 10011-A, a, a lead paint disclosure ordinance that is now law. In fact, if you are an apartment, someone seeking an apartment, it is now standard protocol, what we call standard operating procedure for potential renters to get a lead disclosure brochure. The process was long, sometimes unfriendly. However, after layered acts of diplomacy, tweaking the bill to the best we could, we drafted and won a win-win outcome. Why? Because everyone in that dialogue fully recognized what mattered most. The number one priority was the health and safety of our fellow citizens, our families, and our children. In children, the effects are so much worse. It affects the nervous system, impairs their growth and development, cognitive development forever, behavior, hearing, sight, mobility, and their digestive system. The lives of those children are changed forever. The sadness of this frightening reality is that the potential health consequences of this disaster for many of those children will be realized decades from now. The government of Flint, Michigan failed its citizens. It is imperative that residents get justice for the government's wrongdoing. Current investigations by the United States Attorney's Office and the American Civil Liberties Union in Michigan are a step in the right direction. The most ugly aspect of this debacle that turns my gut is that the victims of this tragedy are primarily, primarily minority and primarily low-income citizens. I question what the action may have been if the citizens had not been majority, minority, or majority low-income citizens. 
In closing, I salute and stand with my colleagues, Councilman Johnson, who eloquently shared with us how important it is to call on the United States Department of Justice to conduct a complete and thorough investigation of the water supply. And I stand with Councilwoman Gim as we put this issue back on the radar screen with the Water Department and work in a collaborative fashion with the administration. This Katrina Deja Vu reads like the script of a fictional movie. The reality is that it's a real life circumstance for an American city. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.